So hi guys, I'm here with Nicholas at Lincoln Auto Electric. Hey, what's that, up? That's the legend. He fixes the cars. And um, they're down in Santa Monica on 2545 Lincoln. If you're ever passing by, come inside uh, to the shop. Look for this gentleman over here. And um, you know, guys, if your Uber or Lyft car has any issues, um, I'm going to give them the best testimonial right now. I've been with these guys since 2002. So 2019, how many years is that? Seven? Uh, 45 years now. Yeah, that, since 1981, actually. Okay. So, yeah. 1981? Yeah, 1981, yeah. Oh, that's when you've... That's when you've That's been that, here. Yeah, no, okay. well, since my father was here. Yeah. Okay, cool. But I mean, I, I've been bringing my car since 2002. Oh, oh so, of course. Of yeah, course. yeah. So that's oh, like that's like <laughs> 17 years. Okay. Jeez, I thought like 1981. How long have I, um, how long have I lived? Yeah. Um, and 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 look, by the way, the, the this car behind us is amazing. What is it? It's a classic, right? It's a 1954 Chevy pickup. It's wow. Custom. Love it. Uh, what what do they what do they f uh, go for these days? Oh. I mean, there's a wide range. It can go from literally like sixty, eighty thousand dollars, depending on Six, sixty to eighty thousand. Yeah, bucks. De wow. depends on the rarity and the year. And, and you guys are, do are are you doing some work for the client right now? But we're sitting like in the shop right now, guys. Yeah. We're like right in the mechanic shop in Santa Monica at Lincoln Auto, in front of this beautiful automobile. So. That's a lot of money, 60 to 80 grand. Yeah, we put a lot of investment into this vehicle. We did. Uh, we've redone the whole suspension. We did the whole braking system. The wow. engine's been completely redone. The transmission is completely brand new. And pretty much little bits and pieces and electrical work all together wow. is going to be quite a bit of money right there. So, so like, like with, with what type of issues can um, a, a drivers like myself, you know, I mean, you know, we have the different Uber and Lyft categories. Which are UberX, X, uh, which are basic cars, XL like minivans and SUVs, and then luxe cars. I mean, generally speaking, I always say to my YouTube subscribers, take care of the very, very basic, so you don't occur uh, problems down the line. But like, how often should they come in for an oil change? What would you say? Well, personally, the, these individuals they drive a lot of miles uh, beyond the average person. And it's always important to pay attention to your oil life. Obviously, the new modern cars now have these oil life meters, but I wouldn't really depend on them if, as you start to have a lot of accumulated mileage, okay. you want to start thinking about, you know, just take, uh, you know, take it to the shop every, you know, five to ten thousand miles, roughly. Okay. Depending on the mileage, like I said, you know, have it looked over because you want to see the condition of the oil. Right. You want to make sure that. Obviously, the oil is not, you know, it's, it, whether it's dirty or not, whether you have enough oil. Also, make sure that there's no other, you know, no leaks, no issues with any other major components, like check your belts, check your filters. Okay. And, you know, minor tune up stuff, you know, check your brakes and your and tires. Those are the main components that you guys are really using a lot. Exactly, exactly. So. And I mean, I, I bring my Cadillac and other cars here, you know, for the services. I know that um, he just mentioned the oil change. Um, you guys always put synthetic oil in my car. I choose to come in every 5,000, but you heard Nicholas, he said you could come in every five to 10,000 miles. And and what about, what, what should they look out like on brakes? Like what, the, the big one on brakes? I mean, isn't there like a, a little, uh, a little indicator to know, hey, it's brake time. Yes, well, some modern cars have an, like a brake wear sensor. It will, it will immediately tell you that, hey, your brakes are low. Okay. Uh, some older vehicles, they don't have any indication on the dashboard. Uh, there's a, a little metal piece that will eventually hit the rotor and it'll scratch and it, on the rotor on purpose okay. to let you know that you're probably within 10% or less. And so that that and transmits the, the signal then, which it, it says check. It check won't be the, a signal, it'll be a noise, obviously. Like if you hear like a con consistent squeak or, okay. uh, or, or noise, like every time you brake, then you know that your brakes are coming uh, and, to, you know, close to needing replacement. It, exactly. And then when, when does it like really get expensive? Obviously, if you don't take care of the brakes and you go like way over the miles. I mean, I, I remember um, I did this way, way back. I learned the hard way. We all learn the hard way, yeah. right? But what like, what is the thing that you don't want to do with brakes? Tell him about Well, you don't want to get beyond the point of the pad life. It will get to the point where you run out of the pad and you get metal with metal with the pad uh, uh, hitting, the, 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 hitting the rotor. Okay. And eventually the rotor is going to grind like a cheese grater. 
Okay. And eventually it's going to get too thin and you're going to destroy the caliper and that's going to be a much more ex expensive repair depending on what kind of vehicle you have. Okay. And then and for anyone that's just joining Lyft and Uber, what, what both companies do, they make sure that before you go on the road, you pass the inspection. Um, Nicholas and the other mechanics working here, they know hey, hey, those hey, forms, yeah. right? And um, there's another guy, there's another troublemaker in the back. Sal, come and introduce yourself. Don't <laughs> hey. hide behind the truck, you're live. <laughs> there's a Sal, he's a legend. So hi to, hi to the world. There he is. Where are you from, Sal? Tell, tell my friends. United California, baby. <laughs> Check it out. Where's Malibu? Malibu. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Um, so um, listen up, my friends. That inspection form. And Sal, we, we need you for another video. So he can't hide. No, he can't. He no. cannot. We got to bring him in. He's why. a legend. Yeah, he's a what legend. What is he? He's good at, like, just channel well, everything. He's, right? he's a, like I said, he's old school. He's, like I said, okay. he worked on the majority of this vehicle, actually. Okay. So, like I said, uh, our mechanics are very diverse. We can work on old school, more modern vehicles. Exactly. Cars with a lot of electrical, we can do that as well. Yeah. So we have different specialties. Which, which, which is true because I've, I've been in and out of the shop so many times and I'll see cars like modern cars, BMWs, right down to these 50 trucks, right? And um, they, they, they certainly understand the broad spectrum. I can tell you that. You see a lot of old timers, old American muscle cars here. And you see a lot of the European, Japanese and you know, US cars, whether they're four trucks, F-150s, I've seen them all here. Now, I have, I have another, um, an, an, another pointer for you guys out there. That inspection form, right? You can literally go uh, through all the different um, points that Uber and Lyft look at. Tires, my friends, it's a big one. So don't even attempt to go in for your Uber inspection if your tires are worn down, right? They can, they, isn't there such, a, there's a little device, what is it called, where you can actually measure it? By the way, they measure it here as well. So bring down, check it out. You might need a tire rotation. You might need new tires. But what is that little thing? It's just like a little um, measuring you're, device, right? You're, you're, you're speaking of the, 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 we call it the tire measuring? Yes, like a gauge, right? Oh, you can just. Yeah, well, there's, like I said, there's different gauges you can okay. uh, measure per se. It's, uh, one of which is it tells you how much pressure is in the tires themselves. Okay. It lets you know, okay, this is the right amount. Somehow are mechanical, so they're not as accurate. But you right. can get at least put it at least over the limit. I mean, over the minimum of what the threshold is according to the side of door panel to okay. let you know that you have enough air pressure or or meets the requirements. And, and and then another thing, like and some of my vehicles, I noticed there's a certain wear on the tire it might sort of wear on the inside maybe you guys just need to have a quick look at your rear and front tires what what does it generally tell us what's going on there um, if there's like an inside or outside wear well you have to keep in mind well, when it comes to rear tires are very stationary they don't move you know left or right okay so if like i said the vehicles equipped with uh you know a rear uh, uh steering rack which some okay. cars do but okay. not but majority Very of the vehicles few, right? yeah extremely few okay um, majority of the vehicles have you know solid rear axle or independent of, uh, vice versa but the, most of the time the rear tires are always going to be straight and, okay and the wear on the rear is going to be not as incremental it's not going to wear as fast but in the front those tires are going to move left and right, up and down, and yes. they're all over the place. So it's going to create a lot of uh, wear, but also starts to tow out, which basically means the tires are going to start to shift outward. Tow okay. in is when the tires shift inward. Okay. And you'll start to notice on the edges, it starts to wear a little bit more yes, than I because that. it's not sitting straight down anymore. Right. It's leaning too much to the corners, and that's going to create a lot of. Uh, heat and it's going to premature wear. And just wear it. And, and then tire pressure, of course. I mean, you got to, guys, I mean, that's a big one, right? You, you, you don't want to ride with four uneven tire pressures. You want to check that up once in a while. Mm -hmm. You might have to go past a, a gas station and just, up, you know, throw your quarters in that machine or you come down here, let them check out your, 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 your pressure. But that's a big one as well. That, that can make a difference, right? A big difference. Yes, you don't want to underflate the tire, uh, I mean, have a tire that's underinflated okay. or overinflated. Uh, when it's underinflated, the, the, remember, the, those tires are holding the whole weight of the vehicle. Right. And so it's going to create an abundance amount of heat because there's not enough air holding inside that tire. 
and you're gonna premature wear, and also it's gonna stress the tire and okay. start to crack, and you start to, you'll see that the cracks will start to build up, and then that's gonna cause to replace them. And and, and another big one, you know, um, just you know, not to waste your time and your money, right? Because you could be on the road earning money, but when when you are ready for that first inspection, why not just just take take that checklist and go over some of the basics with your buddy? Make sure that your indicators work left or right. Make sure that the brake lights work. They will make sure that they want to check your horn, your 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 windows, um, and they look at cosmetic things from the outside. So you can't have too many dents or hail damage or, or scratches. That's when they fail you. But I think we've covered some of the big ones um, that need to be done periodically anyway. Right? It's just part of the rideshare business that you spend the money on oil, brakes, uh, you know, tires, etc. Right? I'd say those are the three big ones. Yeah. But um, if there are any other concerns, and especially if you're in the Los Angeles, Orange County, Ventura, Santa Barbara area, or maybe even San Diego, come by here. I, I will vouch for these guys all day long. Like I said, I've, been no I've known them for 17 years. They've been around since 1981. His dad's a legend. You're also going to meet him. His name's Ruben. And um, I, I really appreciate your time and the time that you took it to, to explain to, to, to my uh, subscribers and my friends out there, wherever you may be, right? Denver, New York, Miami. Right. Um, cars a car, right? It doesn't matter which shop you go to. You got to look out for these points. Am I right? Am I pretty? Yes, of course, my friend. It's a pleasure. I, I have getting to know this guy. He's been I love these guys. Before. They are like family, and and I bring my cars here all the time. And you know, a, a, another good thing that I've also learned is um, there are some people out there. Sadly, you know, just a very few that'll take advantage of you when you go to a mechanic. Um, because you just don't have the knowledge and even like let's say you need to change a light bulb and then they like charge you a hundred dollars or so yes. you'll never find a more fair and honest group than Ruben his son Nicholas Sal the guy that was hiding early on um, <laughs> Marvin the guy that does all the electrics you'll meet him um, they they charge you for the job and the job that they do and they don't go and make excess money on you you know otherwise i wouldn't be bringing all my cars here so again thanks for the time and yeah, um, guys drive safe out there yeah take care guys